Alrighty, the uh, bias pot is uh, on the card in this Vox Continental. The old style is there, the new style that we install is here. And uh, what it does is it produces a feedback line and uh, an impedance slightly higher than ground uh, for the flip-flops so they can trigger easily. Um, they are all wired together and then they're uh, the pot is between them and ground so that uh, as you lift it away from ground um, you get some of the signal from one flip-flop to help uh, another flip-flop and uh, this this um, also is increasing the DC bias on the transistors um, the bias pot may make the difference between some of the oscillators not running or I mean the um, uh, flip-flops not running and others that are running so you want to choose a value that lo puts the lowest note through that means all of them are running and in the particular case of that, that was an A that I put back e -E -F -G -A. so we'll go to the lowest footage footage of the A. You want it till it just starts. Okay. And then there's your next highest footage of the A. Third one. That's A4. Then you want to go to the 8 foot. want to go here, and you want to go here, and then here. Then you want to go to the four foot setting. All right. And they're all there. You generally, the one that has the hardest time is the uh, lowest footage because it has the highest clock. Okay, let's remove one and show them how it's done. All righty, we're going to turn the power off for safety reasons. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the A-sharp card. What we've done is already removed the, uh, the little screw that holds it down. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the, the bias pot on some of these cards is peened over, so that we're going to have to suck the solder out on them. We had a capacitor that just broke. That's not nice. We'll have to get to him in a moment. So we're going to heat the joint up and suck out the solder. <laughs> Do likewise for the other two terminals. <clears throat> and um, once that's done, We're going to take the cutters and we're going to force the bent over pin. There we go. And now we can remove the old potentiometer. And uh, the insertion of the new one is fairly straightforward. goes in place of it. You want to hold it in place before you solder it. If you're not ambidextrous like me, you may want to use a jig. Burned fingers are the result if you're not good. There we go, and that's changing of the pot. You want to set it to about the uh, 11 o'clock position to start. And then uh, that's with, re with regards to that left terminal. Now I see we have a capacitor that decided it was going to go. Two nanofarads. Well, that's a shame. We'll have to get a uh, capacitor out from the bin and replace this one.
there it is down there it's the little yellow one that replaced the uh, the one that broke these are always a lot of fun because they become very brittle the plastic ones become very brittle with age and so therefore the slightest touch or vibration or drop can fracture them okay and then the next thing we're going to do we're going to change the electrolytic on the board that particular electrolytic is a hundred microfarads I'm going to clear the holes and then we're going to put in a brand new one one of the things you'll get is notes that tend to warble a little bit and that is primarily due to the bypass capacitor on the power supply what you're starting to see is um, the flip-flops and other things putting noise on the line and that interferes with the generation of the oscillator's note Okay. there we go and just to make sure that we're going to make contact um, I'm going to just apply a little contact cleaner to the pins and in we go sharp so we're going to go to the lowest footage okay go to the next highest footage and four foot she's fine <clears throat> put it back bolt the card back in uh, <clears throat> with regards to the upgrade of pasta we're putting in uh, the ones built on the ceramic substrate are longer lasting than the carbon track on the uh, uh, phenolic the phenolic are the brown ones the white one is the ceramic and the, uh, the problem is, is that as they age, um, the phenolic becomes very brittle, subject to cracks, stress, warping. The ceramic doesn't do any of those. Of course, you still will have a problem if your Vox gets dropped out of a fifth floor window, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's much more durable. It'll certainly survive the... Uh, three-foot drop out of the back of the truck. <laughs>